Hi, and welcome back to Sticks and Strings. I'm Naomi. I'm Beth. I'm Eve. And we look I'm, kind of Christmassy. Huh? We do look. I was thinking about that when I got here. I was like, oh, Christmas. <laughs> but it's not Christmas. It's September. I am blind. But uh, as soon as the, uh, but as fast as the year's going by, <laughs> it's going to be. I know, I know, it will be. No, I'm literally blind. We just drove here from my house here. Beth and I were out on an errand together and we drove down. And the entire length, it's like a 10 minute drive from my house to here. And it, I was driving west and it was 6 whatever. What was it? 6. 6.15, yeah, something and like that. the sun, I like had my visor down, but pulled out of its thing and crooked like this, so one little corner was shading, like, and I was like, driving like this the whole time. <laughs> so if you Tra have transition lenses, they don't work in the car. <laughs> no, but, and even if they do, you're still going to go blind. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, I, pa I have a pair of sunglasses in the car that I put on specifically when I'm driving West in the afternoon, I know, but you still can't, morning, even if you have and it, it hurts you still. still. It's mm -hmm. like being stabbed in the and eye. I, I got out of the car here and I'm like, I cannot see. Yeah, I, was, I had sunspots in my I eyes. It's like, it yeah. so bad. And my <laughs> neck was hurting me because I was like, I'm so short that, that yeah. the regular visors don't help. So I'm like driving like this all the way down, all <laughs> ten minutes like that. And I'm like, I hope, I hope the light's green. I remember <laughs> when I was driving Uber, uh, it, it, you know, because I always went in the early, early morning and in the evening. So I was often going east in the morning. Mm -hmm. And the freeway signs, I mean, I knew which road went after which, but I'd have to tell my passengers because they were in a different spot so they could see differently. You know, I'm like. I think this is such and such a road we're coming on. Can you confirm that? Because <laughs> it looks like a black sign to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. Yeah. It's awful. Um, when I was, uh, when we were young, our ch my childhood home, our childhood home was western facing. And the front door in the evenings would just like become molten lava. The <laughs> yeah. doorknob, you couldn't touch it. The house would get hot. Like any of those western facing rooms, the dining room, the living room, my mom and dad's room, just like. <laughs> so when we bought our house where we are now, uh, we, we really loved it. We loved everything about it. We said, yes, we want to put an offer on it. And then that night I was in bed and I'm laying there and I sat up and I was like, Mark, which way does that face have, that, that house face? <laughs> and I sat there thinking about it, trying to orient myself, and I was like, okay, the front door faces south. Okay, we can buy the house. <laughs> Little did I know that the western facing wall of the house would be my bedroom. There's no window, but the, you can, the, the wall certain, certain times of the day, you can like put your hand like that and just feel heat raining mm -hmm. off the, I mean, certain times of year. That's why we have this type of shutter right. to try to keep some of that. And you have those, uh, like, sh like uh, the screens. The screens yeah, are the screens yeah. are shaded. When, when I well, like when I went to use the restroom at your house when we first got there, and I went to wash my hands, and the water was so hot. I know. The cold. I had just it was just cold tap. Right. And it was boiling hot. Yep. Yep. In the summer, I would like say. Wash Arizona, where you can blanch <laughs> your vegetables by just washing them off. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> welcome back to our channel. Thank you so much for all of our new subscribers. I saw we were even up even more to like 514 this morning, I saw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's exciting. Um, before we start, I want to say we got all of our winner's emails. Mary, I got your um, measurements. So I am going to um, make some uh, swatches and make sure I can I can work it all in and, um, and I'll... I'll work on those socks this week, but we got your emails. Thank you. Congratulations yes. to our winners. Hey, just a reminder, Mary, here's what your socks. And she said she wants short socks. Mm -hmm. So that'll be fun. The other two, uh, the whale kit and the, and the, pro, uh, what do you call it? Project, project bag. bag. <laughs> they should get there Monday. Yeah. They, they, they so were, they've the been way. put in the mail. Yeah. So they're on their way out. So at least that's what the post office said. <laughs> they can be liars. They can be liars. Yeah. But uh, you're going first. Yes, right? I'm going first. All right. So um, 
my first whip go pull was this uh, Wandering Sheep by Lindy Stitches. Um, and I started it uh, last year. I just started the sheep and did my initials. And so I hit the goal of seven days, plus I did a couple days extra, and I got this far. I have not done the, the grass on the underneath the sheep. Uh, there's a, a different shade of green under here, and it goes up to make the stem of these little pinky flowers here. To, and they're a little hard to see, but um, I have not done that yet because I had to do the, the feet of the sheep in order to get down to where the, the grass goes across there. And uh, mostly I wanted to do the face of the sheep because I didn't like him not having a face. So I did the, the face, the ears, and everything else. And I did his feet. And I did um, this big, I don't know what, thistle? I don't know, flower, whatever it is, over here. And I did the heart down here. So... It I might be a panty. Maybe. A peony, yeah. It could be on hydrangea. On the so there, it's not a hydrangea. No. I know that much. Peonies uh, are round like that, and they're big. Yeah, because hydrangeas uh, look like little balls, you know, balls of, of blooms. Those, those I do know because they were they had a lot of people had them in Little Rock. Um, but anyway, so so yeah, this is about nine days work here. So. There's still a lot. This the sheep is just all fill in of this uh, black color, and then there's a, the grass and the, and the stem of the, these flowers, and then there's uh, like a border at the bottom, and then there's a bunch of words too. <laughs> I haven't done any of the words that. So that's that's a wandering sheep, uh, and so I don't know if I'll. I have a few days after I hit the goal on my second one, so, um, and then I have a secondary chart. So, you know, I have enough days to, to work on it. And um, this, I'm not gonna take it out of the hoop, but, um, so I have a story to tell on my other Whipco call, which was another sheet chart called Lost and Found. It's just a Silver Creek Samplers uh, design. Um, it says, I am a lost sheep gone astray. Shepherd, find me this I pray. Oh, shepherd, listen to my prayer and keep me in thy loving care. That's a different, that pink fabric's different than what you said. Yes, it is, and I'll explain that. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the chart. When I started this, I started it uh, last year, and I started it on this lovely green fabric. I love this fabric. I love the color, this sort of sagey, olivey green. Um, but I had talked about how the stitches were, you know, really hard to see. They hardly showed up. And I had stitched this, it's one, I was doing one over two on this uh, fabric. And so I, I got it out uh, the other day because I had, you know, looked for, I, I had taken all the threads out of the project bag, so I was making sure they were all in there. They're all DMC threads. So I was looking for them, making, you know, making sure I had everything. And, um, and then I was looking at it, um, I guess it must have been Wednesday, late, late Wednesday night, because I finished that, those extra days on, on the Wandering Sheep one. And um, so I was looking at it to see where I was, where I had left off and everything. And, and, and that was when I was realizing it's really hard to see, um, even with the you know, bright light I have in my room uh, when I stitching. And, and so, I was trying to see, did I cross that X? Did I not cross that X? I, you know, and so I finally, finally figured out where I was, and I, so I put in a few stitches in there, and I realized, you know, I'm not having any fun. <laughs> it's, it's too hard, yeah. it's hard to see, hard to stitch. My, I'm not real happy with the stitches because I'm not sure they're in the right place or if I, they're crossed properly. So, so I went to bed, and all day Thursday I thought, I, I wonder if I could just restart it on a different fabric, because I don't, I don't want to do this on this fabric anymore. And so, but the problem is, you know, I have lots of fabric, and I have lots of dye to do whatever color I wanted to, except that all my fabric and all my dye is in storage. All my white fabric, you know, that I have. And so I do have 
um, a, a little uh, stash of a few, uh, you know, uh, pieces of fabric that are already dyed that are not, you know, assigned to anything. And so I was trying to determine if I had anything the right size, you know, for this because the, the chart is uh, 147 by 131, so it's a little bit on the large side. So I have to have, you know, a little bit larger size of, of fabric. And I was looking at the, at the instructions of the chart, and I was using my cross-stitch calculator, and I was going through all my fabric. And most of the pieces, there was a couple of, of like, nice, um, like, steel blue Lugana, but it's a little bit medium darker blue. And I really, really thought that, that the colors, especially the sheep, would look good on that color, that color. except that, yeah, a little <laughs> bit darker than that. This is the is that, 25 count. Is yeah. that no? So, but the fabric, it was just like a little bit too little, too, like like half an inch, an inch too short, too small. And so, I guess if I had done like over one on the 25 count, maybe it would have been enough, big but enough. But I didn't want to do that. Miserable problem. Yes. And so. Um, so anyway, I looked through all my fabric, and I had like some a couple of big pieces of of nice sort of uh, uh, lighter green um, cloth, but they were really big. And I thought, well, if I did it in the corner, that you know, but I didn't want to like waste a large piece of fabric on a you know, and so so I decided to be a little unconventional, and I had a couple of pink cloth pieces like this. I have one that was a lighter pink, and then this the sort of cherry purpley pink. But I, I kind of like this shade. Um, but so I decided to try this one. So I restarted it, and I started in the this one I had started in the middle of the design. That's why I was like in the middle of, this, of the sheet, you know, randomly. Um, and fortunately, I did make a working copy, so I was able to like, where the heck is this? And so I was like, okay, here's the center of the design, and here's what I must have started here. And, but so I restarted in the upper left-hand corner. So I started with this dove, and this dove is almost complete except for his beak because that was one DMC color I need to track down. Uh, it wasn't, I, I didn't find it where I found all the other ones. But I, so I did the, the, the dove and this little heart and part of the scarlet that was the same color as the heart here. So, um, and this is, um, I guess I started it late Thursday, mostly Friday is when I started working on this. So it really is only one, one and a half days out of seven. Um, and I worked a little bit today on, on, on this, like, up here, this part of this garland going across. Um, so anyway, this is where I am now with Lost and Found. Um, and you know, I, 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 I was just thinking about the fact that as much as I like this fabric, this is like a linen, um, I don't know if it's like, uh, I don't know, but it's like, you know, probably 46 count, it's very small. And it's a linen and I really like it, but I, decided that I really love Lugana. This is a uh, 28 count Lugana that I dyed myself, and this is 28 count Lugana. And, you know, it's a little bit on the thick side, I guess. And I always think of like denim, like a pair of jeans. That's kind of how it feels, but I really, really like it. It's a little tight, maybe because it's been dyed, you know, that it tightens up the, the, the holes or whatever but I really like it and I like the texture and I like the way things look on it. I like the denseness of it. So anyway, so I'm now I'm happy with mm -hmm. this. So that is pretty much all I've done since last, last week. Yeah, that's it. So you're next. Happy. And is it, is it, did you pull everything out of this old fabric? No. no. Oh. Oh, you just had that one line? Yeah. Oh my god, that is impossible to yeah, see. Yeah, it's impossible. It's tiny Oh, it would have been horrible. Yeah. So, yeah, I was, like I said, I was very unhappy. I was not enjoying myself. Okay. The only time you need to be that unhappy is if you're getting paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... There ain't nobody paying me for this. I am... 
Oh, wow. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to pull off some of this. <laughs> uh, I think. One of my work book hauls for, um, what month are we in? September. Um, is uh, cross stitching for fun. This is um, Art Deco Spring, and I. Uh, <laughs> okay, so every single one of the, oh, here. Let me show. You. Sorry. Every single bug and flower has many, many colors. The bugs that I'm working on right now are this one and this one. Uh, they have one, two, three, four colors plus backstitch. And um, so I I stitched this one first. And I realized while I was putting in, I think the third, maybe the second color, I don't know, that I had shortened the, what do they call the segments of a bug? Um, I had shortened the one up here by, by the head a little, by one stitch. And I said, oh, it'll be okay. And I just fudged it. And then I finished it and went to count for the flower and I said if that is one stitch off the flower will be one stitch off mm -hmm. and in order to get it to go around in a circle you make one mistake it may not work yeah it was like cascade so, compound everything so I pulled it all out <laughs> and I folded it nice and put it in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> well, just now I got to the end of that color, this third color, and realized there was a giant knot on the back of uh, the fabric. So I'm gonna have to pull it out again, although I'm not as annoyed this time. Um, but when I put this in timeout, I looked around and I said, um, hmm, So I have a new start. Which one is that? This is Al Forst and Brewery oh, Cranes. Yeah. Now, when I say I have a new start, it's not a big start. It's an itty bitty start. Uh, this is right side up. I mean, I just wanted to start it. <laughs> and this wasn't even a whole thread. It was just what was left on, you know, of our use thread. But uh, it's a center start, so that's part of this crane right here. I love that. And I can't wait till you finish with that. Is that a Christmas one, or is it just no? It's just cranes things. flying over the over some. It's like moonlight or something. Uh, yeah, or? it's it it looks like evening or nighttime. I don't know. It looks kind of Chinese in, <laughs> in nature. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like those big panels you see. So, I realized that this Lugana, this 25 count Lugana, was going to be uh, big enough uh, for it height-wise. And then it's just a little bit more than half this way. So, I said, I'll oh, use this fabric because it's the perfect color. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could afford to buy the fabrics and the threads from Al Forst Embroidery because um, everything that I've seen, yours mm. and some others on TikToks and stuff, they look fantastic. But I said, I really shouldn't have started something new. <laughs> I should finish something that I've started or at least work more on something I started. and. The others were put in a different project bag. They were put away, not in our storage unit. They were just not in my hands. But this little dude was there. 
This is um, Corgi and Snow by uh, Cute Patterns by Maria, Maria Bravko. And it looks done, but it's not done. Um, I don't have the picture. Um, I don't know what I did with it. It's in some bag somewhere. It's so cute though. It's but, gonna be so cute. <laughs> so oh there is a thread in this dog that only is used for backstitch right here. So I didn't have it. I didn't have it in my bag and it's not in any of these that I have here. And I was just like, okay, it's too far away. I'm not going to, I have it. I just don't want to go hunting for it to do a tiny bit of cross stitch so that I can say, I have a finish. I'll finish it. I just, you know, <laughs> I was just working on that last night and today. I don't know. Recently, very recently today for sure. Um, I'm very happy to have this done. Now, the little blue down here at the bottom, those are supposed to be half stitches, but the half stitches didn't really show up. So I said, hmm, those are gonna be whole stitches. <laughs> I just, I think he's so cute. I just, I love her, I love her designs. They're just awesome. They're so pretty. They're so cute. Yeah. And I'm close to another finish. Not finished. Uh, this is Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts 2023 Temperature Style. And this one, I realized I had a mistake in it, but I decided to just go with it. Um, one of these little icons right here is one stitch too far over, which meant I was going to run into the border. So I just had it like close to touching this next one. But that is almost done. Look. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still thinking that I probably need to go get another skein of a dark red. Of the, uh, yeah, I think it's 918 or something. Because it's used for one of the hot temperatures in my temperature chart. On your turtles? Or? A stitch in Mama Temperature Turtles. And it's the same color as the border of the other one. So she's mm -hmm. gonna, she says she's going to run out. Well, I already had two, and I'm on the second skein. Yeah. And yeah, and I'm like, if it doesn't cool down here. <laughs> okay, so it has cooled down. It was, when you guys pulled up, I think it was maybe 103. But during daytime, it was not. It felt so awful. It was horrible today. <laughs> so, this past week was between 105 and 110 the entire week. It was all that color. Mm. <laughs> Every single day, the same color. And it is as boring as you think it is. Um, to have that just constant heat. Ugh. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm like, I think it's a little too cold to swim in the evenings now. <laughs> But uh, it's just so uncomfortable. And, and this is the kind of heat where you touch your car and it hurts, you know, if you hit the wrong metal part or... Well, that's uh, the thing. You said it's too cold to swim at night, but you cannot swim during the day. Mm -hmm. It's too awful. You can't and the dog swim. would just sit there and go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and... Um, uh, when it's I September. when I come when I go to teach my class, I park, and then I have to get everything out of the car and drag it inside, right? And then in one of the schools, I even have to drag it across their concourse, and mm -hmm. go into the classroom. Now I know intellectually that the classrooms are air conditioned. I know they are, 
but by the time I start to feel like there's air conditioning in the building, the class is over, class is over. <laughs> and I have to drag everything back the other way. So I come home just sopping wet from sweat. And you would think I would just go jump in the pool, right? It's only 103, it's too cold. No, no, no. I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to working. Okay, so there is my temperature turtles. We've got September with a good start. I can't believe it's almost the middle of September. Neither can I. Neither can I. Yeah, no, technically it is basically the middle of September. No, one more day. When they see this, it will be. Yeah, so that's me. Well, okay, hang on a second. All right, I am... Further along, this the only thing I really did this week. My nail is catching on this. I gotta file it down. Um, my any this, kind of any kind of needle craft teaches you to keep your nails nice and yeah. trimmed and and and, and uh, lotioned up. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I think it's skin that's catching. It's right here. I gotta mm. fix it. Yeah. It's gross. Yeah. Um, so this is Hannah's little top. It's called Geo, um, and it's got this neat knit and pearl pattern on it. So, all you can see is the, the loose yarn. Anyway, um, I really like the way it's coming out and the gradient. It looks like I spilled. What's funny is, so on the back you can really, because remember I went back and forth flat for a while, so a lot of the white color is on the back collar. And then as you come down the front, it started to incorporate a little bit of the the brown, but right here, can you see that big splotch? Oh, yeah. It looks like something spilled right here <laughs> on the sweater. <laughs> it's going to bug her forever because it's a lot darker than anything else around it, but that's just the way it goes. Um, so what I've done is, so, oh, so here's some photos of me trying the, I got to the point where the, the pattern said to try it on. So I, um, I, I put it on the Hannikin. I'll show you guys while I'm talking. I'm gonna mm. put them up here. I put it on the Hannikin to see if the <laughs> to see if the sleeves if it was the right length for mm -hmm. the armhole depth. And it seemed a little bit short for me, you know, for for what I thought she would like. Mm -hmm. um, so it said if you wanted more armhole depth to do another six rows. So that's what I did. And I just finished that early this morning. So while I was sitting here just now, I put the sleeves on uh, a piece of waste yarn. And then I cast on here, cast on a few stitches. You can see that little bridge right there. So I cast on a few stitches. And now I'm heading across the front and I'm almost to this sleeve. And I'll put these sleeve stitches on hold and then cast on stitches and connect it like that. So, so that leaves the sleeve caps and then I'll come back and continue the sleeves uh, after I finish the body. So this is called separating for sleeves and that's where I am with this. After this, then I just knit in the tube all the way down. I'm not doing any body shaping or anything. Um, so I'm just gonna knit all the way down to the length that looks good. Um, that Hannah agrees to. And then I'll take, so that should get us through this gradient, I'm hoping to this dark um, reddish brown that it ends up as. And then I'll take the second ball that I got and I'm going to, I think I'll start by doing the collar in the white. Uh, and then I have to go through the yarn and find this middle color to match when I pick up stitches on this sleeves. Because what I want to do is keep the gradient going down to match the, the body. And actually what I might have to do, because what happens with sleeves, because it's such a smaller circumference, the colors change Faster. slower. Slow. Mm -hmm. So I may actually separate the colors into little balls 
and measure the sleeves against the body and kind of make sure that the the sleeves are changing the colors at the same rate mm -hmm. which means i'll have a lot of little balls of yarn and and over the two over the two sleeves i might do them in tandem and just make sure that they kind of match the body otherwise i'll have one that has long color changes and then this one's going to start dark you know what i mean so i'm really mm -hmm. going to have to think about how i distribute the yarn because the color changes on here are very subtle and so i'm going to have to really kind of See, like, I'm gonna have to be able to tell the difference between this color and this one and this one and that one, and where exactly does it change? It's very subtle, which makes it beautiful, um, but that's what's gonna be the challenge on the sleeves. So mm -hmm. I might just, I might just say, too bad, I'm not doing long sleeves, because that sounds actually, now that I'm saying it out loud with my voice, like a lot of freaking work. <laughs> so then my other thought was, I'll do the white from the other ball on the neck, on the neckline up here, and then actually take this dark color because um, take the darkest color and do just the cuffs. I might thinking about it. So it would just be a dark cuff mm -hmm. and have a short sleeves. But my my initial my initial idea of doing the sweater would be that it would be a, a short sleeve cap sleeve sweater. And I got all ambitious, thinking I would do the sleeves, but now I'm thinking about having to match them in the gradient. If they were all one color, it'd be one thing, but I might not do well. So that's what I'm contemplating with that. Um, Mary, oh, I said I got your stuff, and so I just was reminding, here's the, oh, I already said all that about the socks. The other thing that, um, I've been doing is searching for a pattern uh, for to use these two. I should have them out of the bags. I'm sorry. Oh, for your that for my friend. Symphony friend. Yeah, for my friend. Um, or, uh, through the symphony that I that she's like, you should get something for me. So I found a pattern that I believe will be enough. I found two patterns, uh, and. One is a slip stitch pattern, and I will show it to you here. Hang on one second. One is a slip stitch pattern. It's this one right here. Oops. Um, yeah, I'll put a big pin in the screen. And you mm -hmm. see how the main color has that, uh, like a star pattern? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that that would be the purple and that the other color would be this multicolored. Because this purple has multiple colors, but it's overall just overarching purple. Yeah. And then this one is multicolored. So I think, and then the other one is, is this, which is true brioche. And this is completely reversible. You see? Mm -hmm. See how inside the, the blue is prominent and here the whiter color is prominent? Mm -hmm. So you can reverse this. So I think that would also be cool because one side would be the the purple would be prominent and the other side this would be prominent. So she could wear it either way depending on her mood or outfit. And I told her because initially I was like maybe I could do a hat and cow set and I do this is not enough yarn to do that. So I sent her the two pictures uh, via email early this morning. And I was like, let me know what your thoughts are. I still have to wash this yarn and uh, it'll floof up and it'll be really nice. So those, that's the other thing I'm doing. So I think I will, I need to have that done by early December, late November. So uh, my, my, my thoughts are I should be finished with this uh, soon and then can start that. I'll be finished with this soon if I decide to do short sleeves. <laughs> So, anyway, um, so that is, I think, all I have done. That's mm. the end of me. Um, so, what was I, I was going to tell a story, and now it has flown from my mind. <laughs> but, um, um. Uh, Oh, this Friday, last Friday, I had the, you know, the failed lunch. That wasn't a failure, but the Postino lunch story, right? 
this Friday I got to go to a, a conference, uh, a little like a, what do you call it, a, 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 a peer learning event. So uh, our orchestra, along with a lot of other nonprofits, not just arts organizations, but all kinds, are participating in this uh, survey uh, learning technique of how to take information through surveys from your clients and then you know analyze that information and then close the loop as they say and give feedback uh, to your constituency uh, as a and, and, and to continually use this model to better your organization to learn more about your your patronage and all that kind of stuff and um, there is a uh, trust here in the city that has granted money to all these organizations to take part in this. So then all those organizations that were participating got together on Friday and it was a really nice time. And one of the things, and it made me think about life in general, but one of the things they talked about kind of, she said, you know, we need to all be in agreement about this for this meeting. And that is, um, there's a lot of really good ones, but one of them was, speak in first draft and I thought that was really cool because you know you can get intimidated we talk about you know uh, about mistakes and being comfortable in making mistakes and that was kind of what she was saying was like it's okay to to you know share what mm -hmm. you're going to share and don't be intimidated by the fact that it's not perfect, it's not perfect. Right. and so speak in first draft, and, and I, I really, I really like that a lot, and it gives each other, then you're giving each other grace to like, well, what she said really isn't true, but it's like, well, mm -hmm. or, or not exactly, you know, completely yeah. right, or whatever, you, you give yourself, you give yourself and others grace in that, and I thought that was really Well, cool. and sometimes somebody has an idea, but their idea implementation you may think it's not practical or whatever and you contribute and you say you know what that's a really good idea but maybe we should do it this way right exactly mm -hmm. exactly and and so I, I thought it was really it was a really neat time and they were so nice because they had we had lunch and when we signed up for lunch i was like i really need a low carb meal so i get there and because i was worried it would be just like all sandwiches bread you know everything and that is exactly what they had uh, from Wildflower, but they had their box that said low carb on it, which is for me. And it was a yummy little salad with chicken on top and a really nice dressing. Mm. And it made me feel, made me feel good. Because I was like, oh, I don't have to stress about what to eat or what not to eat. So that was really good. And uh, so that's what I did on Friday. Otherwise, this has been a horrendous week. My boss a little while ago was like, can you take on this project? It's a mailing. And I was like, sure. So I designed the, redesigned the order form, wrote the letter, got the list, sent the order form off to be printed, got the letter merged, got the envelopes printed, but it was like, I did, we didn't want to spend tons of money on it, so we were like, we have this color envelope and this color paper, and they don't match. I, I have enough of this one color, but not enough of the paper to print all the letters, on a matching paper, mm. and I have enough of the white paper, but not enough of the envelopes <laughs> without late without um, window. We have tons of window envelopes. We didn't want to do window envelopes because so finally my my boss was like, maybe I'm too hung up on the fact uh, on the matching, and I'm like, they're gonna throw the envelopes away. <laughs> She's like, all right, just go for it. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so so then. Uh, I was halfway through printing 1,300 letters. I'm standing at the printer, and I remembered that we all recently found out that the printer in the music library folds automatically. <laughs> <laughs> so it did not. So then, and then, but so anyway, we had to handful them, and then we printed the merged letters right onto the envelopes. The, I mean the addresses, mm -hmm. so then I had to keep them in order. Mm -hmm. And then I had three people stuffing, so I had to. I had three boxes of the printed envelopes, so I had to find out who was here, who was here, and they were listed not alphabetically. They were listed by 
by a number, mm -hmm. uh, customer number, but the customer number was not on the envelope. <laughs> so I had to look at the, at the, uh, you know, the, I, I printed out the list. So I, anyway, it was like this strategical puzzle. <laughs> and then our executive assistant, man, she, she stuffed the envelopes like that. <laughs> and then I spent half of my day. So on Friday, literally I watched, uh, this was, uh, no, not Friday. On Thursday, I watched three movies at work uh -huh. because, and there was nobody, no meetings in the conference room, so I just had taken over the conference room and I was folding. And then the executive assistant, she brings back, you know, box after box of folded and, I mean, stuffed. So I was like, maybe, I guess I should seal them. Uh -huh. So then I spent half the day sealing hundreds, hundreds of envelopes with a little, you know, envelope and sticker. And then I went to her box office manager. I'm like, you said something about the fact that the the stamp, <coughs> the meter, the postal meter machine will, will seal the envelope. She's like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> so half of them, I had a whole box full that were sealed already. But then the rest we were able to run through and seal <laughs> and stamp at the same time. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> but through the efforts of all my colleagues, and everything got out. So my baby was born, <laughs> and it's out in the world now. So hopefully, it will, uh, it will, uh, it will bring, it will reap benefits. Mm -hmm. hoping. You should get one in the mail. You should open it. Mm. Anyway, if you didn't open the other, <laughs> you got your tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was that was like consumed now a week and a half of my life <laughs> just getting this thing you know out and finished and out and approved and printed and mailed and ooh. when I worked at the graphic design studio and we had uh, customers that wanted mailings done you know there's companies that that's all they do right, right. and right. Like for our really huge ones our, our 5,000 9,000 right mailings, but I mean we send the, out. what I was gonna say is we would all of that, we wouldn't do it. We would farm it out. They would pay for it. We'd farm mm -hmm. it out. And so many of them were like, why does it cost so much? Um, mm -hmm. Because you don't want to fold it and lick it yourself? No. I mean, mm -hmm. even just the postage and the paper. Yeah, and, well, that's what I mean. Oh. They, they don't want to do it themselves. They want somebody to do it for them. So it's right. going well, to have to Yeah, pay the for printing, it. everything costs money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so... Well, I know, and, and it, it, it was, um, you know, and, and it, because we thought, well, we could just do this in-house. The, we printed the order forms because we needed, we're sending, we sent three order forms with a letter in every envelope because it's like a referral program. Mm -hmm. And um, so so we needed, you know, three times as many of the order forms. And I'm like, I'm not printing and folding those, you know, in-house. In and... Um, and we have our we have a printer on speed dial who yeah we have our big big printers that we use but then we have actually a guy that I knew from my time at the Baptist Foundation mm -hmm. a friend so I, I when I started working in marketing I was like we need to use this guy he's great and he is and he like printed a couple things a little little things for my boss and she liked it and printed a few more things and now she's like can we send this one to Matt and I'm like yes <laughs> we sure can. And so she's always like, can you call him and see what he would, you know, get an estimate or whatever. He's really great. And like, we joke because one time I sent him a file at like, like, uh, I don't know, nine o'clock in the morning. And an hour later, he walks in, here you go. I'm like, you are enabling us, Matt, to be last minute all the time because he's so fast. But, um. But yeah, so uh, so he's great, and um, and then uh, but no, it was it was it was hard because we had to fold all those letters too. But it, it worked out, it worked out, and it, and it, it was good. So that was my that was my whole right. hard push today. Reminds this me week. when I uh, when I worked at Blue Cross this before I left Little Rock. I worked uh, as a long term camp anyway for for Blue Cross Blue Shield. And, um, and the department I worked in, they uh, basically like uh, tested insurance pack, you know, the insurance package. So somebody said, you know, somebody, some company says, okay, if somebody breaks their leg, you pay this much. 
and if somebody you know has you know this disease we pay that much and whatever and so the the people in this department would test you know the, their coding and everything to make sure it triggered everything properly whatever so so the people who ran these tests when i first started working there it was all on paper so there was just you know piles of paper like this for if a company covered this and this and this and this they had to test this and this and this and this and so they had to print all that stuff off and and all this so it just generated a ton of paper in these files and there there's big, these big file cabinets and you know all the the different companies were in there alphabetically and every so often i guess and like every year i guess they would send these files off to the offsite storage, you know, this storage warehouse thing. But I guess one year nobody got around to sending out the files and then they were testing like the next year and they, the file cabinets were filling up and so they were just putting the files on top of the filing cabinet, just in piles on the filing mm -hmm. cabinet. So they weren't in alphabetical order and they weren't, you know, and some were from this year and some were from that year. And, uh, and then uh, one of my bosses, was, I had several bosses, everybody could tell me what to do. So somebody, you know, said, oh, you know, can you box up these files and send them off to the storage room? And so, so I had like, I don't know how many of those banker boxes, you know, folded together boxes but, but I had to have them in alphabetical order because on the outside of the box, I put, you know, such and such through such and such. Mm -hmm. And so for the most part, you know, I was going through the files, but then I had to like separate the two the years and I had to then like the stuff that was on top of the filing cabinets, they were not in alphabetical order. So I had to, you know, go back and stick, oh, this one goes in here and that one goes in there. But <laughs> if I do that, then I have to move this and this. And oh, I know. I and that. so, so like basically all summer I was working on this project. And, and like at one point, I think I, you know, was, I had gone on vacation over here, you know, or something with the family and then got back and I was still doing it. And my hands were like torn up with hangnails <laughs> and paper cuts and stuff. And then I remember my, one of my boss, my boss going, coming to me and say, um, are you almost done with this? And I'm like, ah, you know, I've got 40,000 files to do, you know. And fortunately after that, I think a lot of it was electronic. And so they, they didn't generate paper like that. But, but it was crazy because for months I was like, you know, sorting and filing and ugh, it was horrible. And my, I was covered with bruises from the right because I had to reach on top of the, you know, it was awful. Well, because a couple of people got lazy and didn't want to do it when mm -hmm. they were supposed to do it. Well, well you know, the, I, like I said, I had like, like 30 bosses basically because, because all of these t people doing testing and all the people doing coding and all, you know, anybody could come to me and say, hey, could you help us out and do blah, 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 blah. And so, of course, I had to say yes. I had to make a report for this guy and do coding for that guy, and it, you know. But one day I was, you know, I, I, I guess I was kind of in between, you know, scut work and, and, uh, and somebody had the idea, well, we can get Beth to do this. And so they came to hey, me. Hey, Mikey. <laughs> yeah. And they, this, so this, this woman came to me and she goes, well, you know, um, the, there was some uh, spreadsheet that they were supposed to, that the people that were doing the testing were supposed to go in this spreadsheet and put some code in there when they did the testing and I guess they had been not putting the code in there so the code was scribbled on the bottom of, of the testing you know front page or whatever and so so she came to me and she said well we wonder if you could help us out and put all these codes in the spreadsheet and so I'm like I don't understand what that's about but okay and so she said well you know like, sit, take this one here. And she goes, well, you see this code right here, you would enter it. She goes, well, I don't know what that says. So let's me look at a different one. And so she's like, and I'm like, I don't, I don't you understand. You don't know what it says. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand how to do it. it. I can't read it. I don't know what to do. And so she's like, 
well, okay, let me, let me, let me put that. And so, so I didn't that have job to say, yeah, I didn't have to do that because like, I, if you don't know what, how to do it, you can't possibly explain to me how to do it. So, it was crazy. When I hurt, got, when I hurt my back at work, they put me in the office. Now, I was used to doing tons and tons and tons of paperwork because the government is not anything if not paper copies and electronic copies and, and mm -hmm. you know, and you have to clear it out every year and all that. Mm -hmm. So I was used to doing paperwork. But I'm working in the office at the reception desk and they come to me and they say, well, you're the only person that we have that isn't actively involved in doing anything else, Ex you know, important. And they said, the family of one of the participants was suing the company for something. I don't remember what. And I had to go through all of the paper copies and find everything that said that girl's name on it. Oh, mm. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and to give you a clue, not just the monthly reports that are sent to DDD, not just the reports of how well they're doing on their um, goals, uh, anything that was written about, uh, you know, incident reports or anything like that, and then every single day that the, our participant comes, a sheet is sent to their home, whether it be in a group home or not, I don't know, whether it be in a group home or not, that is, t says what they did that day, right? Mm -hmm. And I had to find all of them between mm -hmm. this date and this date. And, uh, and they just kept bringing me boxes. <laughs> and then they would bring me another box. And then they would bring me another box. <laughs> <laughs> That's called job security. There was, there was a lady that I worked with at Family Life that I don't know if she had some kind of a, you know, like OCD thing exactly or whatever. But, um, you know, a lot of what we did was like, you know, we'd send out emails, we'd send out, you know, electronic notifications of whatever in our department. But um, one of the things she did was like, well, and like, um, it was a, a, a Christian ministry thing. So we would have like prayer requests from other departments or whatever that we were you know, supposed to send out to our people. And so I was the administrative assistant for I this. I finally got it where I could cut it. So for this, uh, I was the administrative assistant for our department. And so other departments would send the email to me about, you know, these prayer requests. And so I would just, you know, send it out to all our people, right? Well, this particular woman, I forget what her, she was, uh, what her position was, but she would then, she would, she would also get, I guess, this, these emails about the prayer requests. And so she would, she would print off the prayer requests on paper and take the paper copy to everybody's desk. And, I'm like, and I told her one time, I said, I, I already got this and sent it to them electronically. And she was like, I know, I would just, you know, she wanted, she wanted to have, she would send up things electronically and she would make a paper copy to give everybody. And I'm like, the, Do you remember when the emails things? used to say at the bottom, think about the environment before printing, the, because people <laughs> used to get their emails and they would just print, 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 uh -huh. and they'd print their whole stack of emails so they could read them on paper. Do you remember that? <laughs> no. That's what they used to do. When, when I used to start working, when I started working at Family Life, we uh, filled out a physical time card and, you know, submitted it. And, and they had, we had, uh, when I first started there, uh, the, the, there was a, an old lady that showed me how to, to you know, they, how you were supposed to fill a chart card. And you had to use a green pen for, for the, I like the beginning of the week, I think, or maybe the day, what, the morning when you started or something, and a red pen for the end, the end of it. So that, you know, and, but you had to write it, you know, like, you know, from eight to five or whatever, you know. And, and then submit this, you know, time card. And then fortunately, 
that went by the wayside pretty quickly because it was, you know, on the computer or whatever. But it was like, it was crazy, you know, the, <laughs> the well, and I think she said, like, when she started working there, like, you know, they would answer the phone with, you know, it was like a, I got the rotary phone, right? It was just, you know, they had very primitive when she started working there. And actually, when I started working there, we had what were called dumb terminals, right? You, so you had a computer terminal that was not Windows based, you know, it was, yeah. and you had speedy codes and things like that. And then little by little, they started, I think the, the people that, like the, the boss and the, his assistant and the team leaders had, uh, had real computers, if you will. And, um, and they had, you know, Windows and Excel and that sort of thing. And at one point, I became the assistant. And so the girl there trained me because I had, I had actually had never used a computer like that before, I, you know. And so, uh, because at home, we had had a computer when I was in college, you know, but, um, and after I got out of graduate school, but it was an old, you know, with the five and a quarter inch floppy disk. Yes. If any of you are old enough to remember those. It was before the little floppy disk and before the thumb drive, you know, <laughs> and uh, before the, 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 disc, the CD-ROMs and that, that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's amazing how quickly things become obsolete as, as you know, new developments. Well, what I used to think about what my grandmother went through, because my grandmother was almost 100 years old. She was just shy of 100 years old when she passed away. But, so she was born, um, I want to say, uh, 1899, something like that. And so you think about all the changes that she mm -hmm. went through, that she saw, you know, from horse and buggy to automobiles to, uh, from, like, wood-burning stoves to electronic stoves to microwaves, uh, escalators, airplanes, you know, just bang, 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 all this like technological development, mm -hmm. you know, and it's amazing just in the span of her lifetime, what she went through. Uh, the, I was like, no wonder she didn't want to get on an escalator. Yeah, she, was, she didn't <laughs> like escalators at all. She didn't mind elevators, so much, but she, she didn't like escalators. Yeah. Like, I guess I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. No. Uh, it's very late and we're very tired. It's late. Yes. Oh yeah, we had an adventure today. Yes. Tell that story and then we'll go. Um, so we played bassoon, both of us, right? And we both played in orchestra and we have a concert coming up. And uh, a little while ago in the summer, we had played in uh, something called Arizona Repertory Orchestra. Just like an orchestra gets together in the summer and they just read Right. And yeah. so we'd gone to one and there was a gentleman there playing soon who I've, I've known for years. And, and I know that he makes and sells reeds. And I was like, hey, Andy, how much are your reeds? So he's like, here, I brought one. And he just gave me one. And it's been great. So the other mm -hmm. night at rehearsal, I emailed him and I was like, I want to buy more of your reeds. So he's like, well, that's fine. But the best thing for you to do would be to come out and... Um, and, and try test, them, yeah, test test them. find ones that work for you. Cause, and then she wanted to buy some too. Yeah. So we went out to his house today and he, we were in his, basically his bassoon shrine. He's got all the equipment, hundreds of reed blanks just sitting there. Mm -hmm. And he's been teaching, he's been here in Arizona, I guess all his life. And you know, teaching and everything. He has this wall of his students and he was like, and she's at this university and she went there and now she's teaching here and she, you know, mm -hmm. and he's doing this. And, um, and he goes, and do you know this person is from, from Rochester? I'm like, no, I don't know. <laughs> but he like, he knows everybody and has so much experience and connection. It was really, it was fun. And, uh, got two new reads and, yeah. uh, it was a good time, but it was exhausting also because we, we played for a little while and talked for a long, long time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so it's been a good week so far. I'm excited to go to work and not have that big project hanging over my head. <laughs> and Mark and I are going to go on a date and go see a movie this week. And, and it's just September. Mm -hmm. And I can't believe it. 
I can't believe our symphony season starts in like what two, two weeks, three weeks, weeks, something like that. Yeah. What are you trying? To and say? then my life will be over, and all my you weekends will be crazy. <laughs> so. You should. But yeah. thank you so much for joining us, winners. Your prizes are on the way, Mary. I'm going to start There's working a on your dog right here. And the dog. dog. The dog knows it's almost time to she's trying to She's trying to tell me something. <laughs> you need to go potty? <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us again, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. It's the neat spoon time out again. <laughs> I got everything where I could start again, and the first stitch I did was fine, and then the next one... <laughs> Where are we going? She's getting mad. <laughs>